explain the following effects of partial balancing in locomotives first hammer blow second tractive force third swaying couple let us understand effect of partial balancing in locomotives if we observe the diagram balancing mass is provided on the wheels and wheels are moving on the rails now due to this balancing mass provided there are two components horizontal component mb rb omega square cos theta second vertical component mb rb omega square sin theta now the partial balancing effect in locomotives is hammer blow and this effect is taking place due to the vertical component mb rb omega square sin theta now these wheels are moving on the rails and there is the pressure variation is taking place while the wheels are moving on rails due to this vertical component so how we can define this hammer blow effect the unbalanced force in vertical direction produces variation of pressure on rails which causes the hammering action now we will understand this term with the help of diagram so this is the wheel so here we will plot angles 0 degree 90 degree 180 degree and 270 degree and again here is 360 degree now when this balancing mass is at 0 degree then what is the vertical component mb rb omega square sin of theta so when we put theta is equal to 0 then here the effect of this vertical component will become zero so here in two dimensional diagram we will plot all these angles 0 90 180 2 70 and 360 now again when this balancing mass moves from 0 to 90 degree then we have to plot here sin of 90 then it will become vertical component fv is equal to mb rb omega square so at 90 degree what is the magnitude of vertical component mb rb omega square so we will assign here this magnitude and we will join this now again this balancing mass will move from this 90 to 180 so again at 180 degree when we put this sign of 180 then this vertical component will become zero and now we will join this point now again this balancing mass will move to the 270 degree so at this angle again when we put here sign of 270 then the magnitude of this vertical component will become mb rb omega square so the same magnitude we have to manage here and we have to show this and again at 360 or we can say 0 degree it will become zero now this is about the magnitude so here mb rb omega square and here also mb rb omega square magnitude is managed now we will understand about the direction of this vertical component now when this mass mb or balancing mass mb is at 90 degree then the vertical component will act in upward direction so here we have to show the direction is in the upward and it's a magnitude mb rb omega square now here p is shown so this is the total pressure on this of the locomotive and uh, of the wheel that will act at the center and which direction is in the downward direction so here we will show the magnitude of this pressure p so here is the magnitude i have shown so what is happening at this case so here mb rb omega square is in upward direction and at the same time this pressure p which is equal to mg that will act in downward direction so both are in opposite direction so this is the minimum pressure because in opposite direction so we can write here minimum pressure is equal to p minus mb rb omega square so we will take the all the forces which are in downward direction positive sign and the forces which will act in upward direction negative sign now in the same way when 
This MB is at 270 degree, then it is a magnitude MB RB omega square will act in the downward direction. So again here is the positive sign. So what is the total pressure on rails when this MB is at 270 degree. So here P plus MB RB omega square and this is the maximum pressure. So what is the variation in pressure? So pressure difference or variation in pressure P plus minus mb rb omega square now because of this variation in pressure on rails there is the hammer blow effect is taking place now there is also one more condition that is locomotive lift so in which condition this locomotive is getting lifted so when this mb rb omega square is more than this p then in that case that wheel is getting lifted and we have to avoid this so in which condition we have to avoid so there should be always p should be greater than or equal to mb rb omega square so we have to manage this condition. So we, I will write here. So here which term we can manage? We can manage here angular velocity that is omega. So for the omega we will find out the formula. So how we can write here? How we can write this? That is omega is equal to. Omega should be. That is, we is P should be greater than or equal to. So we can write here omega is equal to under root of P divided by MBRB. So we have to manage this omega up to this value. Now we will move to the second effect, tractive force. If we observe the diagram for the locomotive, there is the arrangement of two piston cylinder and the cranks are placed at 90 degree apart. So we can say that for cylinder 1 if crank is at 0 degree then for cylinder 2 crank is at 90 degree. So what is this tractive force? So it is the resultant unbalanced force due to these two cylinders along the line of stroke. So along the line of stroke there is the horizontal component of the balancing mass. And this horizontal component we know that is mb rb omega square cos of theta. So for cylinder 1 we can write here horizontal component of unbalanced mass that is fhu1 is equal to mb rb omega square cos of theta. So we can write this formula in other way as 1 minus c m r omega square cos of theta. So instead of MBRB, we can place here 1 minus C MR. So what is this C? That is the part of reciprocating masses to be balanced. Now we will write the formula for cylinder 2. That is FHU2 is equal to MBRB omega square cos of theta plus 90. So here it is important cos of theta. Instead of theta, we have to take theta plus 90. So we can write this in other way as 1 minus cm r omega square cos of theta plus 90. So tractive force is the resultant of these two components. So how we can write this? So Ft that is the tractive force is equal to FHU1 plus FHU2. Now we will add these two. 1 minus cm r omega square. Now when we add this then this term is constant. So we will take here as a common term and in bracket we will write cos theta plus cos of theta plus 90. So we can uh, write here as 1 minus c m r omega square cos of theta. Now cos of theta plus 90 is minus sin theta. So we can write this. So this is the final formula for f now how to find out the maximum value and minimum value for this tractive force. Now in this formula for this Ft, theta is the variable. So we can differentiate this formula with respect to theta. That is dFt by d, d theta is equal to d by d theta cos theta minus sin theta. Now this 1 minus c m 
बाद ओमेगा स्क्वायर इज द कांस्टेंट टर्म सो दैट दिस टर्म इफ वी ट्रांसफर टू द राइट हैंड साइड देन इट विल बिकम जीरो सो टू फाइंड आउट द मैक्सिमम एंड मिनिमम वैल्यू वी हैव टू टेक d बाय d थीटा cos थीटा माइनस sin थीटा इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो व्हेन वी डिफरेंशिएट देन इट विल बिकम माइनस sin थीटा माइनस sin थीटा इज cos थीटा इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो वी कैन राइट हियर cos थीटा इज इक्वल टू माइनस sin थीटा एंड tan थीटा इज इक्वल टू माइनस 1 सो थीटा इज इक्वल टू 135 डिग्री एंड 315 डिग्री so we can say that we get the maximum value and minimum value of tractive force at angle theta 135 or at angle 315 degree so when theta is equal to 135 so at this value of theta what is the tractive force so tractive force ft is equal to so we will put the value so when i put the value 1 minus c mr omega square cos of 135 minus sin of 135 then we will get here minus root 2 1 minus c mr omega square so this is the value of ft and at theta is equal to 315 in the same way when we put here the value of theta then we will get ft plus root 2 1 minus c mr omega square so what is the variation of this tractive force so variation of tractive force is among these two values that is ft is equal to plus minus root 2 1 minus c mr omega square so we have to use this formula to calculate the tractive force ft now we will move to the third effect swaying couple so how we can define so this is the resultant couple due to the unbalanced forces of two cylinders along the line of stroke and it tends to engine tends the engine to sway in clockwise or anti clockwise direction about the center line so we will understand this with the help of diagram so here the arrangement of two cylinders and we will consider here the distance in between the center lines of cylinder will be a now we will draw here one center line in between these two cylinders so this upper half portion will be a by 2 and this lower half portion will be a by 2 now the unbalanced forces along the line of stroke so along the line of stroke there is the horizontal unbalanced force so for this cylinder 1 we will show the direction fhu1 and for cylinder 2 we will show here with direction fhu2 so the couple is formed due to these two forces fhu1 and fhu2 and this couple is formed all about this center line so this is the center line now if with the help of compass if i move the compass in the direction of fhu1 then what is the direction so direction i will get here anti clockwise direction now in the same way about this center line if i move the compass in the direction of fhu2 then i will get the direction in clockwise direction so both are in opposite direction now if we consider here fhu1 so how we can write this horizontal unbalanced force so we can write here 1 minus c mr omega square cos of theta now we know that the cylinder cranks are arranged in at 90 degree apart that is when the crank for cylinder 1 is at angle theta then the crank for cylinder 2 is arranged at an angle 90 plus theta so we have to write here that is fhu1 is equal to 1 minus c mr omega square cos theta and fhu2 1 minus c mr omega square cos of 90 plus theta now here these are the two forces but how we can write the couple so couple is force multiplied by perpendicular distance so this couple is formed about the center line so we have to consider the perpendicular distance as a, a by 2 now how to find out the resultant couple so resultant couple is the addition of these two couples that is fhu1 into a by 2 plus fhu2 into a by 2 but now if we observe both are in opposite direction so when we take this fhu1 with positive sign then we have to consider for fhu2 with negative sign so i will write here 
resultant couple F H U one into A by two minus F H U two into A by two. Now we will put the value of F H U one and F H U two. So here one minus C M R omega square is constant term, so we will take outside the bracket. And a by two is also constant, so we will take outside the bracket. So we will simplify this as one minus c m r omega square a by two in the bracket cos of theta minus cos of ninety plus theta. So we know that this cos of ninety plus theta is known as minus sine theta. So this minus sine minus will become plus. So one minus c m r omega square a by two cos theta plus sine theta. Now, how to find out the maximum and minimum value? So we have to differentiate with variable. So here variable is theta. So we will differentiate d theta. So the d c s by d theta is equal to d by d theta cos theta plus sine theta. And we have to show is equal to zero. Now this constant term, if I transfer to the right hand side, then it will become zero. So we can write here d c s by d theta is equal to d by d theta cos theta plus sine theta is equal to zero. So it will become minus sine theta plus cos theta is equal to zero, and that is why tan theta is equal to one. So theta is equal to forty five degree and two twenty five degree. So when the angle theta, that is the crank angle theta, forty five degree and two twenty five degree, then at that angle we will get the maximum value as well as minimum value. Now we will put theta is equal to forty five degree. So if we observe here is the equation. So for this equation, if I put theta is equal to 45 degree, then I will get the answer. C S is equal to 1 minus C M R omega square A by 2 into root 2. Now again, if we simplify, so A divided by 2, we can write here root 2 into root 2. So 1 root 2 is getting cancelled. So I will rewrite here the final formula. A by root 2. One minus c m r omega square. Now, when we put theta is equal to two twenty five degree, then we will get the answer one minus c m r omega square a by two into minus root two. So again, two we will split into root two into root two. So here we will get minus a by root two one minus c m r omega square. So I will write here c s will be the in between plus minus a by root two. 1 minus c m r omega square, and this is the formula we have to use to calculate the swaying couple.